What's up YouTube? Eugene here. I'm gonna share with you my scent of the day, which is from Guerlain. This is Bois Mysterio. And my scent of this evening is none other than Sange d'un bois de thé. It is not. Um, where did you go? I just had you in my hand. Yuck. Yuck. Rose Nacre. It's here. I know it's here. Here we go. 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 Sange. The scent of the evening. Sange. Sange. The beautiful Sange. And I know there's been a lot of talk. I'm not sure if, you know, Guerlain has... If this is the official repackaging of Guerlain, if they're I'm not, they've never really denied it, but they've never admitted it either. They've just been really quiet about it. They haven't said a whole lot, um, but you know, we ourselves have assumed it's the repackaged Sange, which is because it smells like Sange. And there's a lot of talk of, you know, has. Um, you know, the, it's been repackaged, but has the scent itself changed? I, I'm, I'm actually just dusting off my, my Guerlain bottles. That's why I'm here. But has the scent itself changed? And, um, you know, wearing this today and then wearing Songe this evening, I can say um, it doesn't feel like it's been reformulated to me. You know, Everything is there. It's all intact. All the notes, the nuances, the textures, the colors are all there. But somehow, you know, it feels the same, but something is different. Um, but not enough to call it a reformulation. Maybe it's a lower concentration. I'm not exactly sure, but um, it's so minimal that... I'm really not even worried about it. So whatever the case is, I'm completely fine with it. But I wanted to say that Songe is, Songe here, is the reason that I had become uh, very familiar with Guerlain. You know, Songe was really the reason that drove me to the boutique for the very first time and got to know uh, the brand's history and heritage, um, even though, you know, Songe was released by, under the Louis, Louis Vuitton Mot Hennessy umbrella. And uh, there's all this cry and this hysteria that Louis Vuitton destroyed Guerlain. Did they? I don't know. You know, they didn't really do a whole lot to, to keep the tradition going with the classics. A lot of the stuff they're releasing is very modern and, and you know, Nouveau Guerlain, you know, is Guerlain still Guerlain? Well, yes and no, you know, at least they're, they've preserved the classics and they've taken great care of them. But um, it's, it was with getting to know um, the Desserts to Orient that I was able to discover all the, the patrimony collection, the heritage line. Um, yeah, I was familiar with Shelley Marr. I was familiar with Lure Blue. I don't think I'd have, I had smelled Mitsuko before, but I had. I remember blind buying a bottle of L'Enstant de Guerlain Extreme from the YouTube hype. And when I had gotten it, I was like, hmm, I'm not sure how I feel about this. It's very perfumey. Um... And still to this day, I'm not completely obsessed about it, the way uh, the hype has driven it. Here's the repackaged Lonestone, which is, again, very, very similar to me. All these cries of it smelling different. Uh, you know, I, I, I honestly can't be bothered. But um, with this blind buy, I remember I, I blind bought this at the, at the Toronto Boutique rest in peace boutique and they had sent me samples of vetiver which was like oh my god when i smelled it the first time i kind of recoiled it was just you know like you know that dub uh old man ish it was just like that 
tobacco and the spices were just kind of daring and sickly outrageous but in a weird way I was I was drawn to it like I am to a lot of misfitty strange things I don't know what it is about weird perfumes but I'm drawn to weird smells and I was like flabbergasted with vetiver but also like I can't stop smelling it you know what I mean yeah very old man-ish but classy at the same time um, and even today it's like you know I, I look at I look at you know what's going on and um, like I love Thierry Vasset and, and I love his cockiness and his attitude it's it's cocky and arrogant without being um, without being douchey you know it's like a it's like a confidence when he walks into the room he's got those eyes and when he looks at you they, they, they stare right through you it's like he can see through your clothes and, and he's got this grin on his face and just the way he controls the room when he speaks like everybody's got um, their eyes on them on him and he's got the full attention but you know I love Thierry Vasset and his his perfumes is like all right I dislike them for the wrong reasons I don't dislike them for what they are I dislike them more for what they are not and what they are not is this you know that's not fair to Thierry Vasser I know that it's um, his job to create perfumes that will sell and make money for his owners you know what they are not is this and this is what I want to see from him he's created some great stuff in the exclusive line I mean Santal Noir is probably his masterpiece I hated this when it first came out and again I hated it for the wrong reasons I hated it for what it was not and it was not classic timeless Guerlain it was a very um, nouveau it was very Middle Eastern nouveau Guerlain <clears throat> I remember speaking to him about um, I was really obsessed with Songe and I got to speak with him he came to the Toronto boutique and and I remember asking him about the inspiration of Songe and it was really funny he said he was in the Middle East traveling touring sourcing materials getting to know Middle Eastern perfume studying I'm not sure and he got talking to another perfume person and they said to him we don't like your perfumes they're too French and you don't know how to make real perfumes and that sparked a fire under his ass and he went back to Paris and and he worked on the line and uh, that was his inspiration so his inspiration was kind of ego you know he created out of ego he created out of um, the words of another person hurting him you know you can create from consciousness or you can create from ego and he created from ego either way it works lots of people lots of great artists create from ego you know look at uh, musicians half of them are strung out they're uh, on alcohol or drugs or you know sex addicted and it's all ego right the fame has gotten to their head I'm not saying that you know Terry Wasser is like that at all he's, he's actually a very um, fantastic man but uh, lots of amazing artists and musicians have created out of ego and created masterpieces and maybe it you know it takes a little bit of ego for, for Wasser to create his best work where where you know stuff from the mainstream line it's not really his best work 
Um, but maybe he's not creating out of ego. Maybe he's creating out of, you know, accounting. You know, they're, they're relying on him to move units. Uh, what else do I have here? There we go. This, I love this. You know, it's simple. It's modern. I like this a lot. Um, I've loved this from the from the moment I've smelt it. I've got five bottles of it. Um, it's funny how uh, the opinions and the attitudes of Mont Guerlain has changed in the last what's it three, four, five years maybe. You know, when it first came out, people were. They were steaming mad. They were out of control. It's not Guerlain. It's not, you know, it's sellout. It's garbage. It's mainstream. It's mass appealing. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and I was like, this shit always happens. Give, give it a little bit of time and uh, people will change their minds. And I can see, you know, they're slowly coming around to it. Um, I can do without all the flankers. You know, it's just, there's a lot of, I can't even keep up to date. I haven't bought a single flanker, if I'm honest. I only have the original. I've got a bunch more somewhere. Here's, here's a few more. There's another one. Um, I think I have five bottles somewhere. They could be in storage, but I've got a few more. But here's the original. This is Mon, Mon Exclusive which is the original Mont Guerlain, which is just a little bit um, more interesting than, than Mont Guerlain. A little bit more crunchy, I would call it. Incense-y, woody. But they're basically um, very, very similar. And there you go. That's kind of my, my Guerlain and Thierry Vasser rabbit hole. Um, you know, I love the classics, love, you know, Jiki, I love this, like, in the spring and summer, I love wearing this to bed, it's so cozy and relaxing and, and classic, uh, what else do I have here, you know, Mitsuko, I love Mitsuko. Uh, my mom's signature scent is Le Petit Robe Noir. You know, I told you I wasn't crazy about Lidge. But I do love the Eau de Toilette. Love it. Like, I love the Eau de Toilette for whatever reason. I'm not crazy about the Parfum, but I love the Eau de Toilette. And it just wears differently. That patch hits differently on me in the Eau de Toilette. Brilliant, I love this. It's less perfumey, it's it's more cohesive. I can make more sense of it than the Parfum. The Parfum is a little bit, I don't know, it's like jumbled. I don't know, like I, I, I try to read this story and it's like the pages are out of context or it just doesn't make sense to me the way I would like for it to read. <clears throat> Sorry, anyway. It's been my, my Guerlain rabbit hole. Maybe we'll go a little bit deeper uh, in the next couple of videos, but uh, just wanted to share that with you guys. Anyway, let me know what Guerlain you're wearing. What are you up to? Always love reading your comments, and um, we'll see you all again soon.